Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to do this again. I apologize. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for inviting your followers and friends. Thank you for joining the Purity Service Announcement. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining the Purity Service Announcement. After attending a seminar titled Find Your Voice, I realize it's time for me to speak out on purity. Many times when people share their testimony on celibacy, it's after they are married. We rarely hear it while a person is still in their singleness. Well, I'm here to tell you that purity is possible. I've been living a life of celibacy and abstinence for over a decade and will continue to do so until I say I do. This was one of the greatest decisions I've made in my life. With purity comes power. You learn how to truly trust God and love God. This lifestyle has afforded me to receive amazing levels of healing and wholeness. I've also been able to learn more about my mandate and purpose because my focus has been on him and not them. Purity is a part of holiness and there truly is a beauty which comes from holiness. It radiates from the inside out. I encourage those who are being tempted and taunted to know purity is possible and it's worth it. I just saw a quote which said, if you think celibacy is hard, try breaking a soul tie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you all enjoyed that purity service announcement. I wanted to read it first before we started this discussion on um, purity. That's a topic that we don't hear a lot about um, in today's society with us promote with so much perversion and lust and sexual sin and just sin in general being promoted. We rarely hear um, testimonies of those who um, live a life of celibacy. Um, we rarely hear um, testimonies of those who um, have no shame in it. And um, I can truly say, uh, I thank God that I do have that as a testimony. I've been living um, celibate, or some people call it abstinent celibate. To me, it's the same thing. Um, I've been living like this for over a decade, over 10 years. Um, and it, 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 it was a moment before, I mean, I've shared it with people who know me, but I hadn't really, um, stepped onto this platform and became this voice. Um, but I actually ended up going to a, um, seminar this weekend that was called find your voice. And what's so interesting about it is I actually did, um, I spoke at a conference earlier this year that was titled find your voice. And as I was sitting, um, listening to the speaker, um, one thing that was said was that your voice matters. And I've been one to say, where are the voices where the voice is not realizing mine was a voice that um, the enemy kept silent in this particular topic. Um, and I realized that my testimony is one that needs to be heard, is one that needs to be shared, um, because there are a lot of people that are discouraged um, in this uh, in this area of their lives. There are a lot of people that don't believe that there are people living holy. And if they are living holy, um, they might not be as attractive or they might not be. There's all these disclaimers that people say for those who live holy. So um, I was challenged that I needed to step onto this platform because what I had to understand was um, I didn't just write a book on the beauty of holiness and I don't just have a t-shirt that says the beauty of holiness. I live this. 
And um, a lot of times we tell God, thank you, but we can't just tell him, thank you. We have to live like we say, thank you. And I am thankful to God. Um, I thank him for my salvation. But one thing that I am most grateful for is that when I said yes to God, I didn't give him a yes with a disclaimer. I said yes, and I say yes daily. But when I said yes to him, and then when I willingly stepped on the potter's wheel, and when I willingly allow him to heal me and to deliver me, and I allowed myself to go through that process, um, one of the greatest gifts that I believe that God gave to me was my innocence back. To the point when I try to tell people about my past, to the point when I try to share some things that I've done, um, no one believes me. And that's not, that's not a potion that you can take. That's not, you know, something that you can just, um, wake up one day and feel. This happens when you go on a journey with Him and you allow Him to purify you from the inside out. Um, a lot of times we can be so focused on the outside looking one way, but it's time for us to focus on the inside and living a life of sexual purity will beautify you like you've never seen beauty before. I realize that a lot of people don't talk about this topic because a lot of people aren't living this topic. Um, and that's not me to bash, but I think it's time for us that confess Jesus Christ as Lord to begin to live that which we confess. And confession means being pure and set apart, not just in thought, not just in mind, but also in body. Um, one thing Apostle Eckhart used to say was, you know, a lot of people live holy from the waist up, but we need you to live holy from the waist down. <laughs> I loved it when he said that. We need you to be holy from the waist down. Um, and it's possible. Um, the life of um, um, celibacy and abstinence, it's a daily decision. Um, but what I understand is by me allowing myself to come off the market, to come out and go into the secret place of God, there are certain things that won't go into my marriage. There are certain things that won't go into me being a mother uh, when I become a mother because I've allowed him to purify me. I've allowed him to heal me. I've allowed him to um, change some mindsets and some thought processes that did not line up with his plan for my life. Um, and I got to a point where I love him more than anything. Um, my, my whole purpose in life is to please him and to live a life that's pleasing to him. And by living a life of holiness, that's me saying thank you and saying that I want to please him. So I just, it's, it's been forever. <laughs> I really did not want. Um, for the longest to step onto this platform. Um, there were, um, I, I didn't feel comfortable stepping onto this platform, um, for various reasons, being that I, I live in states not connected to family. But I realized that even with all of that, this message and my voice, um, needs to be heard because there are people who are trying to live holy and there aren't people helping them. There aren't people supporting them. There aren't people encouraging them or even saying that it can be done. I remember I was at one church and an evangelist literally came up to me and said, if I looked like you, I wouldn't be in church. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> What do my looks have to do with my devotion to God? And um, that's what we need to deal with. This is something that we need to talk about um, because this is something that God requires. We have a world that doesn't require it, but this standard is still the standard. And God requires holiness, not just in our mouths, but in our bodies. So I am, uh, I'll be talking about this more um, now that the door has been open for me to discuss um, abstinence and celibacy, but I just wanted to um, say that this is something that can be done. And in order for you to be effective, you have to have standards and you have to have boundaries. You know, just because somebody winks at you, just because somebody says they're interested, that doesn't mean that you have to be interested in them. I remember I was telling a one young lady, um, there was this guy that liked her, but she didn't like 
like him, but because he liked her, she felt as though, you know, she should continue communicating with him. And I asked her a question. I said, how can you say no? If I said, if you can't say no to what you don't want, how will you say no to what you want that God is saying no to? If you can't begin to say no to when you know it's a snake, when you know it's a setup from the enemy, if you can't say no to that, how are you going to learn to say no to something that looks good and God says, no, that's not me? So <laughs> I um, we're going to have to talk about this more because there are too many women and men that are falling into traps and falling into snares and getting off their course with de destiny for a temporary fluttering moment that they regret. And it can take, for some people, they unfortunately never come back from certain situations. You can't play with the devil, especially when you begin to understand your purpose, especially when you begin to understand the mandate on your life. Oh, you can't play with the devil because, I mean, when you have a voice, when you have a platform, when you know that there are people tied to you, when you know that you've called to deliver people from places of darkness, he's not playing with you. He he will send something that looks so good packaged and it will take discernment and the Holy Spirit to let you know that is not God. And because some people feel as though, oh, there aren't that many good men out there. Look, I believe God and I believe if God worked on me, he can work on somebody for me. And I think that we need to stop coming up with these excuses. We need to stop trying to make a man be a man. You can't make nobody be nothing. If anything, during your time of sin, you need to let the Holy Spirit work on you. I say if you don't know your mandate, you don't need to date. Because if you start dating without knowing your mandate, guess what? You're picking someone based on your past. You're not choosing somebody based on your future. So you need to know what God has said to you. You need to know what God is saying about you so you can choose wisely. A lot of people aren't able to choose wisely because first of all, they haven't gotten healed. So there are so many things that are blinding them to be able to make a right decision. And when you're when you're in your singleness or when you're unmarried, that's time for you to allow God to work on you to be healed so you can become <laughs> who God has called you to be. And then you can rightfully discern when God brings someone into your life. Don't be so lonely. Don't be so needy to where you just choose something based on your past but not based on your future. And if that means you have to wait, guess what? You're worth the wait. Believe you me, you're worth the wait. There's no way you're going to invest this much time in God, invest this much time in his kingdom, allow him to purify you, allow him to make you whole, allow him to do all of these things. And he not have best for you. Best don't come overnight. <laughs> Best sometimes takes some time. <laughs> and I mean, I've heard people, well, there's not that many good men out there. Well, I, that's why I said in my disclaimer, I've learned to trust him. I've learned to trust him. And I believe that no good thing, I believe his word, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. So I just want to encourage, evidently, you can see this is a topic, even though I don't talk about it, it's something that I'm passionate about. Because again, I don't just wear this t-shirt. I didn't just write this book. This is something that I live. This is something that I live and I wake up every day desiring to live a life that is pleasing and that requires that I be holy, not just in action or just in word, but also in deed. <laughs> so I pray that um, this scope um, bless you all. I'll be doing some more purity service announcements. <laughs> In the days to come, I'm um, uh, discussing and sharing more of my testimony um, from different angles. Um, and because I, I think this is a dialogue that needs to be had. Um, I just did a um, 
I've been doing some um elef uh, some a uh, periscope teaching on the elephants in the room and last Wednesday the elephant I talked about was sexual sin and sexual sin is a body in the is a is an issue in the body of Christ and it shouldn't be um so this is something that needs to be discussed because a lot of people keep falling um into this temptation and yes God forgives us, but we have to get to a point where we want to be holy. The Bible says, be ye holy as I am holy. So this is something that we are to do, and it's something that can be done. Um, but you just have to make sure you have things in alignment. You have to have standards. You have to have boundaries. You have to have borders. Because what? listen, when you get to the point where you really get to know God and you start having communion with him, you start spending time with him, he starts revealing to you his purpose for your life. There are some things and some people, it's not even an option. It's not even an option. But if the enemy can keep you out of that place of intimacy with God, you'll never know that these should have never been options in the first place. Your, your view will be so limited. Your view will be so skewed to where you're looking at your options like this. And God is like, let me make you over. Let me clean you up. Let me get you together. Let me show you the plans that I have for you. Let me, let me do Jeremiah 29 and 11. The plans I have for you are good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end, which is a future full of hope. You mean to tell me you live a life like this and God doesn't have anything um, amazing for you he does he does and if you're not on this path you can start today yours might not be over a decade but you can start today and if you choose to start today you know make sure that all of your decisions line up with the decision that you made today if that means you need to change your phone number change your phone number if that means you need to change your facebook page and come back in another name do whatever you need to do to establish the boundaries to keep and to stay holy and to stay pure you know you shouldn't be taking phone calls at a certain time at night you already know what that conversation is going to be so don't the, the bible says um, submit yourself to God resist the devil he doesn't just resist the devil and he will flee he doesn't just flee just to flee he flees when you resist so begin to put up those barriers which are forms of resistance against the enemy well I don't want to hold you all too long I just wanted to um, let you all know that I will be doing more purity service announcements um, because this is something that needs to be announced this is something that needs to be talked about we need to interrupt programs and people's lives that the enemy has set in place and let them know this service announcement is for them. It is no longer for them to live in sin, but it's time for us to be pure. If this is your first time, I am so happy that you joined me. Uh, my name is Mashani Allen. You can go to my website, MashaniAllen.com. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, go to Mashani Allen Author. I would love to connect with you there. I am the author. Some of you may be wondering. I am the author of The Beauty of Holiness. This is my t-shirt and this is my book. A Practical Guide to Life, Relationships, and Inner Beauty. Um, just a note for women. You know, we have to get to the point where we aren't so focused on the outside and we really begin to focus on the inside. And one form of focusing on the inside is by living a life that is pure, by being that peculiar woman that's set aside, that's pure, that's holy, you know, um, just, just living a life that's pleasing to God. That is my admonishment for you. And I know that there are more women living like this than are standing on this platform, but I am... I'm happy that I stood on it today <laughs> and I, I will continue to stand on it as long as the Lord continues to present it before me um, because the enemy takes a lot of people out of purpose. He takes a lot of people out of destiny and unfortunately he even causes some people to leave the earth um, because of 
sexual sin. And a lot of things we don't have to experience um, if we live the life that God has called us to live. And we can't live this life based on other people because we see someone with a, someone with a title that's not living holy and we see someone with a title that's not living pure. We live our lives based on what Jesus did and we live our lives based on what the Bible is um has commissioned us to do. We want to make sure that we are living, the Bible says that we're living epistles being read of my, by men. And we want to make sure that when people read our lives, that they see Jesus. <laughs> and part of that is holiness. So, um, I will be back on Wednesday, um, same time to do my quick scope and we will continue in our uh, spiritual elephants um, series on this Wednesday. I believe the elephant that I'm going to deal with on this Wednesday is anger. Um, there is an issue with anger um, in individual Christians' lives, and there is an issue with anger in the body of Christ as a whole. So the next spiritual elephant that we're going to deal with is anger. Um, if you want to catch up on the periscopes that I've done, if you go to YouTube, type in Mashani Allen, all of them are posted there, and you can subscribe. That way you don't miss any of them. Um, again, um, if you um, have not started the path to celibacy, hello, Natasha. If you have not started on the journey to de um, to purity, let that journey start today. Some of you, you need to write in your journal. Here it is, October, what's the day? The 14th, 15th? No, the 17th. October 17th, 2016. I start my path to purity. Some of you need to write that down. You need to make that a commitment. You need to make that a decree for your life and position and posture yourself um, in the word of God, in the things of God, in the um, will of God, and know that this is something that you can do. Again, for those of you who just joined, my testimony is that I have been living celibate and abstinent for over a decade. It can be done and he wants it not just for my life. He wants it for your life as well. Be blessed and know that your best days and your most blessed days are ahead of you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll see you all soon.